I want you to be just as successful as me. Actually, I want you to be more successful than me. That's why in today's video, I'm going to give you a bunch of facts, tips, and information that are proven and will help you along your way. Hi everyone, my name is Roy and welcome to Arcade Treasure Center. Today's video, I'm going to bring you back to yesterday of items that I sold. Along the way, I'm going to give you a bunch of tips, facts, and information of things that will help you on your online sales. I have said some of these tips before and I have gotten a lot of comments where people have used these tips and they have gained success. They have changed their store, they have changed their things and the way they do stuff and they have improved and increased their sales and their profitability. I get a lot of questions and comments and one of the most common comments that I see is People saying that I do a good job and that I make a lot of sales and they're happy for me, but their business is slow or their sales are slow. And look, through the magic of editing video, I was able to change my shirt. Well, it's not entirely true. I just thought it'd be more personable that if I look at you directly and I give you all the tips in today's video, that you'll have time to formulate and process or take notes if you'd like in between each tip. That way you can really take what you need and apply it to your business to help it grow. Cause I'm going to give you a lot of great tips today to help you out. And I know if you follow some of these tips, you will increase your sales. In fact, today I got to pull two pages worth of items. And let me tell you, I get these sales. They're not big sales. They're not huge sales, but they're money makers. If I can bring in Two, three, four, five hundred dollars a day. Isn't that an awesome sale? Well, that's what this is. This is a nice, awesome sale. Lots of items. I got to pull it. So you're going to have to watch me pull these items and I'll tell you about those tips at the same time. Did you know that just this year alone, there are over one billion items listed just on eBay? That's a lot of items for people to look at. So if you're ever wondering why your items are selling slow or you're having slow days or bad days, well, that is a ton of items. Well, did you know that there's 250 million promoted items each day? So when I say each day, when you promote an item, it's going to be for as long as it's listed. So you have a lot of competition and all those other selling platforms and ones you may be selling on have a lot of competition. In fact, a couple of videos back, I made a video that said 7 million people do this every day and I'm one of them. And that is 7 million people every day in the United States wrap package and ship items just using the ebay platform so just kind of process that for a minute if you're a new ebayer or a small business selling small items and you're just trying to make some extra pocket money well then going to garage sales yard sales thrift shops even retail arbitrage like going to clearance items at walmart ross or places like that you can pick up some good items in fact the first items that i sold are going to be right in here in this bin and it's some walmart retail arbitrage clearance items just make sure that when you get them you get them at a really good low price and you look to see what the original price was before the clearance item don't buy a clearance item or something that was marked at 25 dollars and it's only marked down to 20 dollars what you want is that clearance item that sells for you know 25 dollars and it's marked down to like two or three or four dollars that's the kind of clearance items you want to pick up but let me pull this first item so that way you can see what it is and i'll tell you what i paid for it and what they sold for so these are the first items that sold it's a retail arbitrage item i paid a dollar fifty a piece for them over at walmart they're called happy places royal trends and each one of these is a little different and as you can see i picked up a whole bunch of different stuff over at walmart and these right here i paid a dollar fifty a piece for them at walmart at their clearance and normally they are selling for about ten dollars so i listed them at ten dollars and 79 cents and that's what they sold for ten dollars and 79 cents a piece so that's 33 dollars and some change is what i got right there i bought them knowing that christmas time was coming so that, that way they would sell a lot faster so some of the tips I'm going to tell you, you've probably heard before, but some of the tips I'm going to tell you are ones you've never heard before. Tip number one, list items daily. Well, I've said that in other videos and you may have watched other people that have said that list items daily. Well, the eBay algorithm has a twofold process. The first thing is when you list items daily, the first items you list are the list that's going to be at the top of the page or the top of the listings or a top of a category. So you may list something and if 100 people behind you list the same item, well, your item gets pushed down. However, if 
hardly anybody or nobody lists that same type of item for a day or two or a week that item is going to stay at the top and slowly rotate around along with those promoted listings or people that have paid to have a listing on top but that listing will stay there have you ever noticed some of your listings may sell 30 days 60 days 90 days six months down the road that have been listed for a little while well a lot of times that's because those items have generated back to the top and that's why those items will sell and if you list items every day your items are constantly being placed back to the top the second thing that's really important and i'm glad you're watching to this point the cassini index or the cassini algorithm and that's ebay's algorithm is built on the basis of many other platforms like Google and YouTube. Just anybody that has a platform with algorithms, they follow the same things. And one thing that most people don't realize, and I give you an example, is a click-through rate or a see-through rate. In other words, have you ever looked at an item or thought you talked to someone about something and next thing you know, it's popping up on your phone or on your computer and you're as an ad and you're thinking, how did they know? Well, that's a see-through rate or a click-through rate. The see-through rate is if you're scrolling your phone and you're looking at an item, and when you scroll and you pause, if there is a pause and the algorithm has noted that pause for a, a little length of time, anywhere from a second and a half to three seconds, anything longer than a normal scroll, or you stop to read about that product, even though you didn't click on it, well, that's a see-through rate. And so that's why those items will get promoted and they get sent to you as an ad or a, hey, if you're interested in this item, here it is. That's why it's done that. The click-through rate is the exact same thing. When you look at an item and you click on it, you've just created a click-through rate. And if you click on it and hold it there for a couple of seconds, like I said, one and a half to three seconds is all it takes. That just became a click-through and it'll promote that listing that's why a lot of people always say write good titles have a good clear picture or description so that way it's an eye-catching thing and people hold and pause because that pause is what promotes your item it's not necessarily a promoted item that promotes your item and in this bin i sold another item this happens to do with art folk art i always tell people don't be afraid of any kind of art especially folk art or some sort of unique thing it's going to make money buy it cheap sell it for a little bit more inside this bin right here is a nice folk art horse now this folk art horse as you can see has what they call mirrors on it and it's made in india this folk art horse i paid two dollars for at a garage sale sold it in probably less than five days this sold for 33 dollars plus shipping so last weekend i went to a garage sale picked up a couple of items and one of the items i picked up was a scentsy warmer Scentsy stuff sells real good. And Scentsy Warmer is a wax candle melter, which most of you probably know about. But the other thing that I picked up along with it was right here. And it's right in the front. Because like I said, I just got through listing these yesterday. It's wax melts and it's called Scentsy Mocha Doodle. Now this is probably not a superior popular color or smells good but it's probably not one that's just more common but if you get these for inexpensive they'll sell i picked these up over at thrift shops garage sales all kinds of places since he's a name brand and i can pick that stuff up for cheap 25 50 cents turn around and sell it this sold for 11 dollars 99 cents now when it comes to promoted item which is going to be tip number two promoted listings do work it's proven they do work because I said, I said there's 250 million promoted items listed just on eBay alone. Well, those items are pushed to the top. And whenever eBay throws out ads or suggestions or things, those will pop up. But I don't promote every single one of my listings. Some items need to be promoted. If you list an item and you're not one of those people that really look and see how many of those items are listed, then you're fighting a lot of fish in the sea. So, for instance, if I took this tape dispenser and I listed it and there are 10,000 tape dispensers out there of all different sorts and kinds. Well, unless somebody's looking for a scotch grayish blue tape dispenser and they don't put in scotch blue gray tape dispenser, but they just put in desk tape dispenser, all 10,000 of those different tape dispensers are going to pop up. So if you take and you 
list that item and you put a lot of descriptions or keywords or things like that in that title, then if somebody was to say desk tape dispenser, well, this one will pop up before this tape dispenser. So it's really important that you put good descriptions, good photos, and put a lot of keywords, the best describing words that you can in your title. Fill out that title as much as you can with the most common and most productive keywords that you can. Try to leave out words like and, is, of, or I've told people before the word new, antique, and vintage technically has no process for the eBay algorithm or other online selling platforms. Now, I've had people tell me, well, that's not true. Because if I type in new, then that title will pop up on the search and it says new. I typed the word in new and it popped up. That should be in the algorithm. Well, that's not true. When you list an item, an item is going to be listed as new, used, however you list your item, it's going to fall in that category. Have you ever just gone to go purchase something? Maybe you went to an Amazon site, you're buying a new lamp. Did you type in the word new? No, you typed in lamp or you typed in desk lamp or you typed in whatever and it popped up and it was brand new. All that's doing is taking up space. Now, do I do it? I do because it's a natural habit for us as resellers to put those kind of words in there. But I try, if I can't fill it out and I can't put a bunch of stuff in there, I might put vintage or I might put antique or I might put new because I'm trying to fill up the space and draw all those words in. But if you've got really good keywords, I'm telling you, there's no sense in putting the word new in there because people are already looking up that item and the new stuff's gonna pop up first. So I sold this globe. Globes are great sellers. They may not sell right away, but they are great sellers. I got one on the shelf right over there too. But this is a really, really good seller. Globes sell for good money. And what's special about this one is you can see it's got a cord. This is actually a nightlight. And I'll try to show a picture so you can see the nightlight as it's shining. First of all, let me just say that I picked this up $5 at a garage sale, tested it out, it worked just fine. Uh, I didn't test it out at the garage sale. I brought it home and plugged it in and tested it out. It just uses a regular nightlight bulb. And this sold for $25 plus shipping. So I dug out this bag right here out of all my bins because we have a lot of shirts and I have to give props to my wife, which I do in every video. Whenever I sell a shirt, I've got to say so. My wife has done an excellent job at listing all these shirts for me because I don't like doing it. And I don't think she likes doing it anymore either. But in case you're wondering, first of all, let me just say the number two best selling item on eBay, Poshmark, Macari, ThreadUp, just about any online selling platform. So if you're Larry about selling clothing. It's so easy to get and easy to find. We find most of our clothes over at garage sales or thrift shops. In fact, I don't usually pay but about a dollar or two at the most for them. This shirt right here is a Ralph Lauren polo button up short sleeve. It sold for $10.99 when we paid a dollar for it. I sold a Jamaican shirt number 2168 and it's green. So this is it here. This is a Harley Davidson Jamaican shirt. It says Harley Davidson on there. This sold for $18. So this item sold and it's a really good find and a really good thing to look out for. This is a Sony camcorder. It's called the ViewCam Z. And I picked this up $5 at a garage sale. And like the guy told me at the garage sale, he said, I'm selling it cheap because nobody wants to buy these kinds of things anymore. Well, that's not true. These things sell really good on online platforms such as eBay, Macari, all those places. They sell really good. Most online selling platforms, old camcorders, things will sell for good money. Some of them sell for better. Some of them don't sell quite as good, but they'll all make money back that you paid for. This one came with all the accessories right here. I mean, everything you needed for it. I only paid $5 for it. It sold for $35 plus shipping. Tip number three, what should you be selling online? What is your best thing you should be selling? All right, so you're looking at me and saying, hey, Roy, I kind of have an idea. I've been following you. You go to garage sales and flea markets. You pick up all kinds of stuff and sell it. Well, that's what I do. I'm an all-around seller. Or maybe you're saying, hey, Roy, I have been selling for a while and all I sell are 
stuff that I buy off of pallets or things that I buy retail arbitrage or I buy in bulk and that stuff sells great and I don't need to sell this kind of stuff that you sell. Fabulous. It's awesome. Well, let me tell you, for some of you, you probably didn't know this, but 85% of online sales throughout the world is brand new items. Did you know that? Open box items, refurbished items, or even like new, never used items. 85% fall under the category of new items. Well, that's a lot of stuff. And if you're like me, I go to garage sales, flea markets, I pick up things and a lot of it's not new. Well, that doesn't mean that your sales are gonna tank because of that. Mine don't, but it's gonna be what you're selling. What's unique about your item that's selling if it's not new? What's special? Your item has to stand out like a sore thumb. Your item has to be a want more than a need. When people are buying new items, they're buying them for themselves, they're buying them as gifts, they're buying them to resell, they're buying them to use. I mean, that's what you're buying a new item for. But when it comes to a used item, that's not a need. A used item is generally more of a want, a desire. I got to have, snatch it up now, bring it to me because I want that. Uh, that's a good tip. I hope you paid attention to that and I hope you really thought about what I said. If you're not sure what to sell on your online store or what your online business is, keep that in mind that 85% of the stuff that sells online around the world is brand new, open boxed, refurbished, or like new, never used. Everything else is just a want. I want one. I want a golden goose. Well, I sold a mug that I've been waiting to sell, and it's this one right here. This is a Florida Gator Tail Ale, but it's so cool with that marble look to it. This mug right here sold for $12.60 plus shipping. Sold another Christmas ornament, and it's going to be, only got a couple of them left, so it's going to be this one here. Yep, this is a European style Christmas ornament. And as you can see, it's a horse head on a nice silver little cone ball. It's really great. This was original price of $6.99. But being that it's popular, this sold for $11.65 plus shipping. Well, I sold an item out of the V1 Believe Bin. And it's something I've had for a little while. So this really nice spode Christmas bell has a super nice tree on it. The Christmas, really beautiful design. It's a beautiful little bell. And this sold for $10 plus shipping. It was actually part of a set of other pieces and I separated the set and sold it individually and it definitely made more money by doing it this way. So this was a good find at last weekend's garage sale. They're called rattles or shakers and they're Native American. And they're more modern than they are vintage. These aren't old and you can kind of tell if you look at the painting on them, the painting is modern, it's not old. But these little rattles and shakers paid $1.50 a piece, maybe $2 a piece. And my wife actually picked them up and I can't remember, but I think she might have paid $2 a piece for them. So $6, turned around and listed them, list them yesterday. I got feathers blowing around me. <laughs> listed them yesterday and they sold for $60 plus shipping. Okay, so tip number four is probably gonna upset a lot of people. Don't do auction style listings. What? When I say don't do auction style listings, many other platforms don't do auction style listings. eBay does auction style listings. Now I will use auction style listings for two things. I will use it if I'm selling gold, I'm gonna get a fight of people that want that gold. So that's the only time I would say use an auction listing. The second time when I use an auction listing is when I've got an item and I really don't know what it's worth, but I know that I'm going to make some value of it. And I think it's maybe it's antique or old or something that's unique or vintage or just one of those rare kind of items. But if I think it's super unique, then I might run an auction but I'm probably gonna do my starting bid for that auction midway to about what I think I should get if I was to sell it. The Scotch tape dispenser. Well, let's say that was that unique item I bought for $5. If I do an auction 
And never do a one day or three day auction. Always do a seven day auction, probably the best, or a 10 day. Five day if you want to, but I think seven day is probably the best auction out there. And make sure that your auctions, if you do them, they end probably at 5, 6 p.m. or after because most people are at home at that time if it's during the weekday. I would have to say that your auctions on weekends can probably end any time. Like I said, the Scotch Tape Dispenser, if I thought this could sell for $50, but I paid $5 for it, I'm probably going to start it at about $20. Why? Well, I know that I made my money. I'm going to make money. So the reason I say don't do auctions is there's too many low bidders on everything else besides high value stuff like gold or some quantity item that's a fight for. So if I start my auction at 20 and it doesn't go above 23 or 24, well, I've made my money back and I made profit. And if it does go up to 50 or higher, hey, that's the way to do it. You can disagree with me if you like, and that's okay. So I believe in my last video, I explained to you that I sold some pencils and they came from a bag of a bunch of pencils, a couple of bags that I picked up for $1.99 and they've been selling really good. Well, inside one of those bags was something also added to it. And I know it's really hard to see, it's in this plastic, and I don't know if you can see it at all. What's in here is called Alvin French Curve, and they're stencils or drawings, and they're, what they are is actually for woodworkers or wood carvers, just different designs, there's five of them, and they sold for $17.99, and this came out of that $1.99 bag of pencils. So a really good tip to do is things like this. This is probably a dollar store item, and this is a little elf popper, and if you squeeze him, he shoots little, uh, fuzzy balls out of his nose mouth area and like i said it's probably a dollar store item something that was inexpensive to pick up stocking stuffer well sometimes dollar stores dollar tree dollar general dollar stores in general <laughs> are great places to pick things up they're not going to be big money makers but if you can pick up a bunch of little items and i've done it before with a bunch of things like hot wheel cars different things like that if you could sell a thousand items that way you're going to pocket a couple thousand dollars listed this for five dollars and 57 cents and it sold very quickly so in this bag are three christmas scarves and these are another garage sale item that probably didn't pay 50 cents for and they are in really excellent condition they look really good look like they were never used probably had these for a month but we probably listed these i think last week and they sold for twelve dollars and 99 cents all right tip number five is something that i'm gonna not tell you what to do or not to do that's your choice but i'm going to explain it tip number five is using the best offer feature i don't like it do i use it yes do i sell stuff on it all the time using best offer yes but i still don't like it the reason being is if I list an item that's selling or should sell around a certain price and I put that best offer feature down, I get low ball items, offers all the time for those items. Now, yes, you can do a listing and you can put in there a specific price that you want that item to be the lowest that the best offer can come in at. That's what I do because I don't want low, low, low ball offers. Recently, I had an item, it was a pair of shoes. Now, these pair of shoes will sell for about $100. Well, I guess I, for, I forgot, and it's my fault, but I forgot to put in the lowest price that I will accept as a best offer. The lowest price I would accept um, as a best offer was probably about, about $65 because I paid $10 for this pair of shoes, so anything above that is going to be profit. And, of course, I want to make as much as I can. But I had them listed for about $100. And mind you, these shoes are free shipping, and I got an offer for $12. And then their little, they sent me a little comment, a little message that said, if you will sell these for $12, free shipping, I will buy them now. Well, these shoes weigh probably a good three pounds. It's going to cost me every bit of $12 to ship them out. No, I'm doing free shipping. So I had to go back, adjust my listing, so that that way it would come down. And that listing wasn't promoted. So I went ahead and promoted that listing and I put it on sale. And number six tip is if you do promoted listings, if you're selling on eBay or some platform that you can do promoted listings, if you're doing promoted listings, make sure you stay at a low percentage. If you do the suggested rate, which means your promoted listing will show up more often, then you're not only giving out more money, but 
if you decide to run a sale on that item, say you run a 10% sale on that item, now you have to add that promotion to it. So when it sells, if they went through that promoted and they had looked at it, any time in 30 days, if somebody looks at it and 29 days later, they buy it, it's going to get sold and eBay is going to charge the fee of that promoted listing. And if they went under that sale, that falls in there too. So what I'm saying is, if I had a 1% promoted listing, which most of my items are 1, 1.5 or 2%, I don't go above that. But if I do a 1% sale, that means 1% of my sale is gonna to go to eBay under a promoted listing. And then I run a 15%, now I'm running not only a 15% sale, but if it was listed under 1% promoted, now it's a 16% sale. You see what I'm saying? So if you're listing a suggested rate and a suggested rate is seven, eight, nine percent for that item. And then you say, well, this item has been sitting for a while. I'm going to run a sale and I'm going to do it at 25 percent. Well, if you had to list it at nine percent promoted and you do 25 percent sale, you're now doing a 34 percent sale on that item. So that's why I say I don't do all my listings as promoted. I do unique ones, certain ones, things that may not be something that people search for, and I'll do it that way. I'm really happy about selling records. We picked up a lot of them. If you're a subscriber, you know that a couple of videos back, I showed you, I picked up a whole bunch of cassettes and vinyl records, and I paid $40 for all the vinyl records. It was over 300 of them. And my lovely wife has been listing those as well, just like the clothes doing an awesome job and she's been listing them in order alphabetic order and these are some of the things that she, we just sold and like i said they're so easy to sell and had if they don't all sell it's no problem if i only sell 50 or 100 records out of that whole lot and i decide i want to donate all the rest or get rid of them we've well made our money back and then some this one right here as you can see is rudolph the red-nosed reindeer it's selling by gene autry this one right here, we did a sale for Christmas time and it sold for $8.09 plus shipping. The next item right here is Roger Miller's Golden Hits. And this one sold for $9.99 plus shipping. And inside this bag, it had its all, the cover. It is open, so I mean, it's not new. But this is Credence Clearwater Revival. This is featuring John Fogarty's Chronicles. It's really nice. It's actually a two record album and this sold for $24.99 plus shipping. So the next tip I want to give you falls under what I call sell similar. In other words, you have that item that's been sitting for nine months to a year or longer, or you've forgotten about it and you happen to see it on your shelf and think, man, it has been listed for a long time and it's not selling. Take that listing and just end it. No matter what platform you're selling on, just end that listing. Don't throw it in the trash. Now what I want you to do is click on it and sell similar. Now, if you have an item that's multi-quantity, say you have a shirt and it's a polo or shirt, whatever, I'm just coming up with an idea. And say you have that same style and it's a multi-quantity listing where you may can sell that same one with green, blue, red, whatever. There's something that's just the multi-quantity listing. Don't do it with those. The reason you don't want to do it with those is because if you end that listing and you create a sell similar, when you list that item again under sell similar then it all, everything that sold say you had 50 of those items and you sold 30 of them so far well now when it shows up as a listing again it's going to show all 50 of them back again so you've created a monster and a mess is what you've done but if you have a single selling item and it's been sitting on the shelf for a while no matter what it is and you want to end that listing and click on sell similar sell similar is going to give that item a new number it's going to promote that item it's going to tell your online selling platform no matter where you sell that that item is a new item and it's also showing that you're staying active on that online selling platform and that you're listing constantly when really you're just taking the same listing you already had ended it and sell similar now don't relist okay if you end that listing save for this tape dispenser, you don't go down and click relist. All you're doing is relisting the exact same item under the uh, same item number. And if it didn't have a good click through rate or see through rate, it wasn't getting much attention. It's still not going to get much attention because all you did was just relist the exact same thing. 
but if you relist it under sell similar, the algorithms recognize that as a new item and they're gonna push that item back to the top again. Now that's the time when you need to change those keywords, maybe change those pictures. Maybe you had a poor picture, maybe it was bad lighting and you took it at a certain way and now you gotta take it at a better way. You know, that's the time you can do that. So when you're out looking for items at garage sales, or you're out at flea markets or thrift shops, you can pick up a whole bunch of stuff. And there's things out there that are used that people are willing to pay money for because I do it all day long. But also keep in mind and keep an eye out for those new inbox, sealed, open box, newer items. Those are the kinds of stuff that's going to sell really good. I think you're going to do a fantastic job if you follow some of the tips that I gave you in today's video. And if you like these kinds of videos, then you should check out these other videos as well.